what's up, y'all? It's MMA Analyst here to do my preview for UFC 110 happening in Abu Dhabi. Um, I heard for this one, uh, UFC actually sold 10% of, of basically the UFC to, uh, you know, to whoever runs Abu Dhabi. That's crazy, you know what I mean? They must have had some serious business deal going on there. Damn. But uh, anyways, let's get right down to it. Main event. Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira versus Cain Velasquez. Yo, I'm loving this fight. I personally would, I, you know, in a in a real world, like in a dream world, I'm saying sorry. I would like for you know Cain Velasquez to be able to fight his way up and, and and you know not get put in a situation so quickly where he's fighting you know basically somebody who doesn't have you know there's not many people with more experience than uh, Nogueira, but you know it's all good. He is where he is. He's a great fighter. He, He's stepping up the competition, um, and here he is after seven fights. Now, in his sixth fight, he absolutely embarrassed Czech Congo. In his seventh fight, he embarrassed Ben Rothwell, and, and basically both of them were done with uh, superior wrestling, great cardio, determination. Uh, it, it was just basically an all-around great effort uh, from the young fighter. And now he's coming up against uh, something that he definitely has not seen before. Um, you know, prior to that, he had a big win over a wrestler, uh, you know, good wrestler, Jake O'Brien. He beat Brad Morris prior to that. Uh, Dennis Stoinjic. So, I mean, he's done his thing, you know, came into the UFC, handled his business. And really, in the real world, you know, not like imagination world, perfect world, uh, you know, once you're beating all those people, you got to fight top guys, and uh, Noguera is definitely that. Now, we all know about Noguera. He goes out there, um, you know, sometimes takes a licking, but he definitely keeps on ticking. Uh, you know, he's got uh, 32 wins, 20 by submission. Uh, you know, he's lost five times. He, his most recent loss was to Frank Mir. Uh, his most recent win was Fight of the Night against Randy Couture. You know, one of the better fights of 2009. He, you know, he's got a win over Tim Sylvia, where, you know, again, he was getting his butt whooped. He almost got knocked out uh, by Heath Herring, head kick, won that. Uh, and then his last fight in Pride, you know, he beat Josh Barnett. Um... He's fought all the guys, really, out of his five losses. One's to Frank Mir, one's to Josh Barnett, two are to Fedor Emelianenko, and he lost to Dan Henderson way back in 1999. But uh, obviously, he's known for his jiu-jitsu skills. Uh, he's known for his pretty damn good boxing. And, uh, you know, all around, you know, Noguera is serious. People can out-wrestle him if they want, but, you know, he'll sweep you off his back. He'll submit you. And, and this fight is going to come down to where is the fight going to go and, and who can win it there. Um, if it's on the feet, you know, and, and they're just boxing, you know, uh, Noguera's hands are great. He's got great boxing. His hands, I believe, are better than uh, than uh, Cain Velasquez. Uh, if it if it's a wrestling situation, you know, uh, you know, Cain might get the takedown. But what happens when he gets down there? Is he going to be able to run over? Uh, Noguera is Noguera going to be able to hold his own um, and basically do what he's done every fight except for when he was against, you know, Fedor. When Fedor took him down or when the fight went to the ground with Fedor, you know, that was it. Fedor was untouchable. He's smashing him, breaking through the guard. You know, in the, one of the fights, you know, he swept Fedor and Fedor swept him right back. So, I mean, other than that, nobody's been able to say, I'm going to take down Noguera and I'm going to just do my wrestling thing. And uh, and that's the thing about Noguera, um, as as opposed to um, Cain Velasquez, where I think that is his game plan. At this point, you know, he's not going to go out there and be an amazing guy on the feet. He's young. He's still learning. Uh, he's great, but he's still young and learning. So uh, I think in this fight, it, it just comes down to Noguera being better in all the places that truly matter. I do, you know, think that... Uh, Velasquez is better uh, in the wrestling department, but I think Noguera's jiu-jitsu will, uh, will basically cancel that right out. So in this fight, I'm picking, uh, actually I'm picking Noguera by decision uh, or Noguera by submission. I'm hoping, you know, he pulls off a nice anaconda choke. Noguera, do it. Do your thing. You know, maybe a third round or second round anaconda choke by Noguera. 
That would be sick. Second fight. Vanderlei Silva versus Michael Bisping. Damn, Vanderlei Silva. Here's the situation right here. This situation right here? In this situation right here? Yo, Vanderlei, you have to win this fight. If you do not win this fight, then there is not much hope left. For for your situation in the UFC, you're always going to go out and you're always going to be exciting. You're always going to fight for yourself and for the fans and you're always going to get respect. But how long does this really have to go on for with you losing and losing and losing? Now, no doubt he's been fighting some tough guys. He fought Chuck Liddell, you know, had a war. Um, fought Dan Henderson, uh, you know, prior to the UFC. You know, damn, lost that. Beat Keith Jardine, you know, and then lost to Quentin Rampage Jackson, got straight laid out, and lost to Rich Franklin in a very close catchweight uh, fight and a very close decision. But, I mean, you can take all that, you know, add another loss to Merkel Krokop, and right now he's looking at one win and five losses, you know what I mean, in his last uh, five fights, in his last six fights. And, you know, hasn't had a big win since maybe Ricardo Arona, you know, back in 2005. So this is a tough situation for Vanderlei. A lot of this stuff gets overlooked because Vanderlei is so loved and he's he's one of the most endeared fighters in MMA and respected as well. Uh, but he's got to win. Simple as that. This will be his third loss in a row in the UFC. It'll be to Michael Bisping, definitely the lesser of all fighters that he has uh, lost to so far, uh, you know, Rich Franklin, uh, Quentin Rampage Jackson, Chuck Liddell, Dan Henderson, Mirko Krokop back in 2006, that's kind of, you know, that's a level right there, and I don't think that Michael Bisping's on that level, he's on a level, but he's not on that level, um, no matter what, you know, you may think, um, what are his strengths? We already know. You know, his strength at least used to be his, his ability to get in that clinch. His he's got massive power, his aggression, his, his style, his cardio's never been really a question. I mean, he was sick I think against Dan Henderson in that second fight, but the point is he's a beast and that's what he does. He comes out and he beasts people up. He doesn't beat people up. You can get beat up, but you don't want to get beasted up. And that's what that's what Vanderlei Silva does. He beasts you up. And uh, in this fight, you know what I mean? Michael Bisping is going to have to figure out how to win this fight. And I believe that his his game plan is going to be the same it was against uh, Chris Lieben, the same it was against Dan Henderson. And basically... Uh, one time it worked, one time it didn't, and uh, it didn't, and both times we were dealing with completely different fighters. His plan was to pick apart his opponents to a decision. Basically, stay on that bike, keep jabbing, keep moving, win by decision. He openly admitted it with the Chris Lieben fight. I think he said he was going to maybe tap Henderson or knock him out. That's foolishness. We knew the same game plan would be the situation there, and the same game plan is going to be the situation here. Uh, Michael Bisping on the ground impressed the hell out of me with his win over Dennis Kang. Um, also, uh, you know, he fought through uh, a tough first round with Dennis Kang, came out the other side uh, victorious, very impressive, won a lot of respect for myself. Um, you know, Dennis Kang and Den Henderson uh, ha have been his toughest fights since his loss to Rashad and since his win over uh, Matt Hamill. But most definitely, you know, Vanderlei Silva is, is the most dangerous fighter I believe that he's fought. Dangerous Dan Henderson, you know, he's got, you know, he's got that hand and he's got that wrestling. But Vanderlei Silva, you know, if, if it comes down to intimidation factor, you know, then uh, Michael Bisping can claim all he wants that he's not intimidated, that he's gonna go out here and he's gonna do his thing and he's not gonna be afraid and he's gonna do this, he's gonna do that. But the reality is. Vanderlei Silva is a beast still. Even in losing, he's still a beast. He can still knock you out in an instant. He still chase you down. And Michael Bisping doesn't have the striking power to really... I mean, he shouldn't have the striking power according to what's happened in the past um, to go out there and knock out Vanderlei Silva. He's going to be moving away and throwing jabs. I don't know how much power... You know, unless you're freaking Vitaly Klitschko or, or, or old Chuck, by old I mean young Chuck Liddell, where you can move back and, and, and just hit people with jabs. You know, maybe semi shill, just throw a jab and knock out Badahari. But, you know, Michael Bisping is going to be moving backwards and, you know, and throwing a jab on the way out. And Vanderlei is going to be coming in 
doing his thing. And it's going to be a lot of Bisping running and a lot of uh, Vandalay chasing. And if Vandalay comes in with the cardio, if he comes in ready to chase until he catches his prey, he should be able to win this by octagon control and and by uh, and just by beating him up. You know what I mean? He went into a war with 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 Chuck Liddell, got tagged with heavy shots, um, never gassed, lost uh, lost the decision. But it's not going to get any more difficult than that. That is for sure. So I'm picking Vanderlei Silva uh, either by second round knockout or um, or decision. George Sadaropoulos versus Joe Stevenson. Um, this one's pretty simple for me. George Sadaropoulos, up until this point, has been uh, fighting um, George Roop, uh, in, in which he absolutely outclassed him because he's actually a pretty good black belt, Sadaropoulos is. He fought Roman Machayan, uh, he fought Billy Miles, and he fought Jason Dent. Um, these guys aren't at the level of Joe Stevenson. Um, Sadaropoulos basically has really good ground game. That's what he has. Now, I'm not saying that's it, but I'm saying that's what he has. Uh, Joe Stevenson, now, his ground game isn't amazing, but his ground game is definitely good enough to, to, to be able to deal with George Sauteropoulos, I believe. I also think that he's going to be the better striker. He's going to be the stronger of the two. He definitely has more experience. And he's actually, you know, in all this stuff, I believe he's also younger. Um, I just think that this is a situation where it's, it's perfect for both guys to see where they are. Joe Stevenson... In all your fights, you know, you fought the best, you lost to, to the best, you fought a lot of good guys, you beat a lot of good guys. Where are you now? You know, and then Sadaropoulos, you know, you, you've ran through some guys, you've handled your business, you're at a point in your career where it's like, we're going to start giving you guys, and this is really what Gatekeeper is. At this point, it's very clear. Joe Stevenson is not a disrespect thing. It's just Joe Stevenson is the gatekeeper. If you can get past Joe Stevenson, then we're going to give you guys on the inside, you know, in that in that title area. If you can't beat Joe Stevenson, you got to stay outside. You're not allowed on the property. And that's the situation here. I think Joe Stevenson will be able to win this fight by just being all around the better, uh, the better MMA fighter. Uh, Keith Jardine versus Ryan Bader. Um, this is another, you know, situation where I believe they've got a gatekeeper thing set up. Keith Jardine, you know, he, he can go out there and beat Chuck Liddell in a three-round war. Uh, he can go out and lose a very close decision to Rampage Jackson. Or he can go out and get absolutely decimated by Houston Alexander. He can beat uh, Van, uh, Brandon Vera. Or he can get, you know, rape choked by Vanderlei Silva. He can beat Forrest Griffin. Or he can get, you know, jacked the F up by uh, Tiago Silva. So this guy's an up-down fighter. He, he can beat you at any given day unless you're certain folk. And uh, the situation is Ryan Bader, you know, isn't really certain folk. But on the other side, Ryan Bader... You know, he's coming, he beat up Eric Schaefer, won that, beat Carmelo Morero, beat Vinny Maglahez, but like, it's like, how good is Ryan Bader? He's a really good wrestler, he's very strong, he's been working on his hands, well, but it's all good, but how good is he? So what are we going to do? We're going to put him up against Keith Jardine. Uh, in this fight, you know, Keith Jardine needs to win it. He's uh, he's on a two-fight losing streak. Um at Forrest Griffin, uh, un until now, or until recent, he went win loss, win loss, win loss, loss. So this is like he really doesn't want to lose this. But I believe that Ryan Bader is going to have the tools. He's going to have the better wrestling. Um, Keith Jardine's, you know, his they call it herky jerky. I don't know what it's all about. Why he keeps doing it? It's not really working. It's not getting him a title shot. Um, it's not getting him win streaks. And it's not something, you know, it's not, if it's natural, fix it. If it's not natural, quit it and strike like you're supposed to strike. This here is not what it's all about. That's not what it's all about. Guys come out here and they do certain styles because certain styles work, because certain styles are, are made for success. And other styles like this, you know, it might beat some guy and I don't know what's going on, but that's not a style. 
I don't care what it is unless you're coming out with Drunken Master, which it's not anyways. Um, it's just not necessary. But I think Ryan Bader is going to be able to go in there. He's going to be able to strike with them. You know, of course, he, Keith jardine has got those nice kicks, but I believe kicks could end up being takedowns. And I basically got Ryan Bader winning this fight uh, by decision in which two rounds he basically uh, tries to control Jardine and his underrated ground game. I'm not saying it's not underrated. I'm just saying people love telling people they got underrated ground games. Um, but I think Ryan Bader will end up winning this by just being a better wrestler and just pushing forward nonstop. Um, and now we've got Mirko Krokop for Ben Rothwell. When I first heard about this, the first thing I thought was, oh, Krokop's fighting again, Krokop's losing again. Because it just doesn't seem like Krokop has it in him to fight um, anymore. I mean, he was the man, or well, like he was almost the man. And for a long time, he was always like second or third in command in the world, only behind Nogueira and, and, and Fedor. And it's just been not that lately. You know, he came over to the UFC. That was basically when it all went downhill. You know, um, he had just come off his win, his big win in Pride. He came over. He was fed Eddie Sanchez. He's eight, eight, Eddie Sanchez, spit him out. Then he hadn't trained in the cage. He was just doing dumb stuff. Got his head knocked off and his leg twisted against Gabriel Gonzaga. Then he fought Czech Congo. Lost to Czech Congo. Got his balls all mixed up. Went over and left the UFC. Went over, got an easy fight against Mizuno, beat him up real quick. Then he was losing a fight against Overeem, uh, but that got no contest, you know, because his balls again got rearranged, but it still doesn't matter. Then he beat Hongman Choi in, a, in, you know, basically a kickboxing match. Then he came back, poked Mustafa Al Turk in the eye, beat him. Then he lost to Junior DeSantos. It has not looked good for my man since 2006, since September 2006. And. I automatically thought, you know what, Ben Rothwell is probably just going to come out here and do something similar to Junior DeSantos. But I thought about it, and I'm going to go against my earlier thing, which I will never pick Krokop again against a top 20 fighter. And I'm going to have to go with Krokop here, and the situation is this. Um, Junior DeSantos, uh, sorry, Ben Rothwell is not going to try and take this fight to the ground. Ben Rothwell's striking is powerful, but it's not fast, and it's, it's loopy, and it's not... It's not what, you know, for example, Junior DeSanto striking is. Um, I hope Crow Cop doesn't plan on still doing that circling and trying to get the head kick off. It's possible, but uh, I just believe in this fight. And even as I say this, I start to say, you know what? Just go with Ben Rothwell because, you know, you can't pick Crow Cop in this fight. You just can't. You can't see somebody continuously say they're going to do something different, they're going to train harder, they're going to train better, put out videos about how they're training harder, and then come up and look like doo-doo. You can't keep picking that guy. I didn't pick him against Junior Dos Santos. I did against Mustafa Al Turk. Um, I think I picked him against Krokop. I picked him against Gonzaga. But who? Everybody would have at that point. Oh, man. I'm going to go with, and I swear, if he loses this fight, that is it. All right? That's it. I'm picking Mirko Krokop. By uh, by a decision, and by basically having better striking with his hands. His hands are actually pretty good. Do your damn thing. Damn. On the undercard, we got Alvis Sinisek trying to make a record for seven consecutive UFC losses. He has not won in the UFC since 2001 when he beat Jeremy Horn. Since then, he beat... To he, he, he lost to Ortiz, Tanner, Babalu, then he left for a little bit, like two years, came back, it, you know, lost to Griffin, uh, lost to Alessio Sakara, and then they brought him back, and, and, and he almost tapped out Michael Bisping, lost there, and, and, and he's fighting uh, Chris uh, Hazeman or Hasman or whatever. By the way, Elvis Sinisek hasn't fought since 2007, and he's fighting a dude that was on a Four fight losing streak and just one, but he took a break between 2004 and 2008 and lost in his return in 2008. Uh, sorry, he sorry he won his return in 2008, but hadn't fought since 2004 when he quit on a four fight losing streak, and now he's on the undercard um, because they are both Australian, and the UFC needs Australians on this card for some reason. Damn, Stefan Bonner versus Christoph Sosinski. I'm picking Christoph Sosinski. Um, let's say by Kimura. 
Um, realistically, probably uh, he'll knock him down first, then he'll come over him. Stefan Bonner does a whole lot of swinging and a lot of fighting, but he doesn't do a whole lot of damage. He doesn't knock people out. He doesn't have powerful hands. He's real sloppy. And in this fight, I think Christos can be able to take advantage of that. Chris Lytle versus Brian Foster. It's a good fight. It could be fight of the night type stuff. I'm going to go with Chris Lytle uh, by decision. Goran Relic versus C.B. Dalloway. Goran Relic coming back after some time off. I think he, like, his back was broke or something crazy like that. Needed, sir, I don't know. He needed some craziness, but he's back. He's fighting C.B. Dalloway. I'm going to pick uh, C.B. Dalloway in this fight. And uh, we've got James Tahuna versus uh, Igor uh, Igor Krokop, man. Uh, change, uh, change with Krokop. He came and he lost to Vladimir Matashenko. You know, I'm going to pick Tahuna. I saw some stuff on him. He, he looks like a pretty exciting uh, fighter. He's also Australian. He's coming off some pretty half-decent wins. I'm going to pick uh, James Tahuna by knockout. So that's it. UFC 110. It's going to be on at like 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. They're going to rerun it on Saturday night. I think I got to switch my time off at work so that I can like watch this in the afternoon. Yo, MMA, it's important. Peace.